Welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Fun tales to make you laugh and cry with some of the best storytellers from around the world. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Kim here. This week we're going to give you a bit of a treat. This is a bonus guest story all about a little pig. It comes from a series of Australian stories called Bullfrogs and Lizards. They're narrated by David Smith, the co-producer on Super Great Kids Stories. David grew up in Australia. Bullfrogs and Lizards isn't a series of traditional folk tales and fairy tales like the ones on Super Great Kids Stories. No, these stories were made up by David's granddad and told to David and his sister when they were little. And now... He's recorded them to share with people like you. In this story, Roberta has recently won a little pig at her school fair. And her pig turns out to be very helpful on the farm. Where bullfrogs and lizards come along and see Where bullfrogs and lizards will swim or climb a tree Where bullfrogs and lizards, there's so much to explore where bullfrogs and lizards come with us, there's more. Roberta Rabbit and her pig. Roberta Rabbit had entered a competition at the school fete and had won a little pig. It had to live for a few days in an old wooden box, with Roberta going as often as possible to look at her very own pig and to pet it and to make sure it had food and water. Roberta was as proud as though she had a whole farm of pigs and all the family was interested. Mum had promised to make a special sty as a home for the pig and she began at once to gather materials together and to measure out a place. It wasn't many days before she took Roberta to look at it and see what she thought. Down where the other pigs lived and joined onto their styes was a neat little enclosure with a fence around, all painted a nice bright red. Inside, at one end, was a little house with a doorway and a corrugated tin roof, and there was a nice trough made out of half a log of wood for the pig's food. Roberta was delighted and thanked her mum very much. Then she noticed a plain piece of board nailed onto the fence and neatly painted white, and she asked mum what it was meant to be. Well, said mum, I think you would rather want to give your pig a name, and it would be nice to write it on the board so everyone will know. That evening at tea time, the whole family were full of suggestions, such as Percy, Peter, Bill, Montmorency, Tom, Dick, Harry, etc. Roberta looked puzzled, trying to decide which she liked best, and Mum was quietly smiling to herself. Then, she said to Roberta, I don't think you need to worry about any of those names. Why? said Roberta. Just this, said Mum. Seeing as your pig is a little girl, I don't think boys' names will be much use. So they all started over again with names like Priscilla, Prudence, Pansy, Violet, Rose, and a lot more. Roberta thought carefully once again and decided that Pansy would sound best. And so Pansy Pig it was. And she was settled into a nice new home with a big fat mother pig with lots of babies right next door for company. When the mother pig was not busy with her many piglets, she was very interesting to talk to and knew lots of stories about pigs. One day, she asked Pansy if she knew why pigs had such flat ends to their noses while most animals had round or pointed noses. Pansy didn't know and had never really thought about it until then. So she was very pleased to settle down in the sunshine with her little flat nose up against the fence and listen. Very long ago, said Mother Pig, all pigs had pointed noses like many other animals, and the pig with the most pointed nose was thought to be the most beautiful. But some silly pigs couldn't keep their sharp noses out of prying into other people's business and got them caught in doors and traps and had lots of trouble. Some even got the end of their noses cut off in these accidents and were ashamed of themselves ever afterwards with their funny noses. 
Now, there was one thing that all mother pigs taught their children not to try and do, and that was climbing trees. It was all very well for monkeys, <coughs> snakes, lizards and such creatures, but pigs <coughs> simply weren't the right shape for that sort of thing and would only get into trouble. Most little pigs never thought of trying, but there was always someone different. And sure enough, there was a little boy pig who always thought he knew better than his mum and got into lots of trouble. One day, he watched a young monkey go straight up a big tree to right near the top and swing about there from branch to branch. So he decided to try and began to scratch and scrabble at the trunk of another big tree. But his round body and stiff little legs and hoofs didn't help him much. But he did get up a little way, and then there were more branches and he got on further, until he surprised a large bird sitting on a high branch. The bird opened its eyes very wide and said, Good gracious, I never saw a pig climbing trees before. Ah, said the little pig between his panting and puffing, but you never saw me before. I'm the very greatest climbing pig. And he went on higher. He could see a very long way, but he couldn't hold on very tight. And a sudden little breeze shook the tree and he slipped and couldn't catch on again as a monkey would have done. Down he went with a great swoosh bumping from branch to branch and then hitting the ground very hard right on his nose. When he got his breath back, he didn't seem to have any nose left at all. It all seemed to be knocked back inside his face. However, it did gradually come back part way and then stopped and never came any further as long as he lived. Although he never climbed any more trees, all his children took after their daddy and had short noses. And now, almost all pigs do. So you see, Pansy, that's how it all began. And Mother Pig rolled over and tried to count her piglets to see if they were all there. One had slipped through the fence into Pansy's place and she had to chase him back again. <laughs> Roberta was careful about Pansy's food and water and she cleaned out her sty every Saturday to keep it clean and nice. And then she used to take her for a walk around the farm and she came to like that a lot. She used to find nice things to eat, and she met many of the other animals, both large and small, like the horses and cows and sheep, and also the ducks and hens. The first time she saw Rover, the big black dog, she was rather frightened. But soon, they became great friends. Rover explained that he had to keep watch on all the farm, and he told Pansy that if she was in trouble or danger, she should squeal as loud as she could and he would come and help her. She remembered this a few nights later when she woke up to hear men's rough voices trying to speak quietly near the sty of Mother Pig and her fast-growing piglets. It was obvious that they wanted to steal them and take them away with their mum. So Pansy began to squeal very loudly. The men told her to be quiet, but they couldn't see her and didn't really know just where she was. After what seemed a long time, but was only a minute or so, she heard the big voice of Rover begin to bark, and the men were very angry, but they still kept on trying to catch Mother Pig and the piglets. Then suddenly, Rover and Mr Rabbit were there, and Mr Rabbit switched on a big electric torch and shone it right on the men, who started to run. He also picked up a big stick and hit it with such a sudden bang on Pansy's roof that the men thought it was a shotgun going off and ran even faster. But Rover was after them and came back some time later with a big piece of ragged cloth in his mouth, bitten from one man's trousers. The noise woke up all the rabbit family and they came out to see what was happening. They soon realised that Pansy had raised the alarm and Rover had quickly replied, so both Pansy and Rover were praised and patted, and Mother Pig gave many thankful grunts to them also. Next day, Roberta was busy with a paintbrush at Pansy's sty, and her dad saw that under the name of Pansy was written, Watch Pig. For Roberta thought she was as much a watcher as Rover, and he was always called Watchdog. Mind you, Pansy sometimes got into trouble that was her own fault. One day, when she was out of the sty, walking about with Roberta, Roberta was suddenly called by her mum to help lift something, 
and Pansy was left alone. She wandered around, looking at all sorts of things, when she suddenly smelt something that was interesting. It was a very nice smell, and she was sure it belonged to something that would be nice to eat. She wondered where it was coming from and kept sniffing the air. She would trot a little bit one way and find the smell getting fainter, so she would try another way, until at last she found the smell very strong. And there, right in front of her, was a large tin with a lid off. And as she put her nose into it, she could see something right at the bottom. She poked her head in further, but it was still far away. So she pushed her head in a bit more. Although it was a tight squeeze, she still couldn't quite reach it. Another hard push, and she was eating up something very nice. But it was soon all gone. She tried to pull her head out of the tin, and it wouldn't come. She tried and tried, but the tin was really stuck, and she began to be afraid and to run around, banging into stumps and falling over branches of old trees on the ground. But still, the tin was there, and she couldn't see a thing. Then she started to squeal, a strange muffled noise coming from inside the tin. Roberta and her mum came running, and all their efforts to pull off the tin made no difference. Then, Roberta's mum got a thick stick and gave the tin a hard sideways bang, and off it came, leaving Pansy half deaf and with her head and ears quite bruised and sore. Roberta patted her and made her quiet and said, You did look funny, Pansy, but I'm sorry you got frightened. Back in her sty, Pansy told Mother Pig all about it. Mother Pig listened and then began to laugh. You know, Pansy, she said, I did just the same myself when I was young, and I was frightened. But it taught me not to put my head where it shouldn't go. And Pansy was quite sure it had taught her that too. If you like this story, you can find the whole of Series 1 on Spotify. Just search for Bullfrogs and Lizards. See you on Friday.